Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Each task you create within a project file must have a duration. This duration can be measured in any unit of time from minutes to months. Most often it is measured in terms of hours, days, or weeks. When entering tasks into the task list, you can enter the task duration into the duration column of the table in the Gantt chart view. You can also enter this information into the duration field that appears on the general tab within the task information dialog box if you use that method of task entry. When setting task duration from a start date, Microsoft Project schedules the task as soon as possible. However, it only schedules tasks during the project's available work hours that you chose from the calendar dropdown in the project information dialog box. For example, if you chose the standard calendar when defining the project's working schedule, then tasks are only scheduled during the Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. work schedule defined by that calendar choice. Also note that duration can be entered using the following abbreviations if desired. You can use M for minutes, H for hours, D for days, W for weeks, and MO for months when entering task durations. For example, if using a standard work schedule, a task that starts on a Monday and has 5D as its duration will finish the following Friday of the same week. Since Microsoft Project is a task scheduling application, you most often set the duration of a task and not its actual start date. When you set a task's start date, Microsoft Project interprets that as a constraint on when the task can start and will not schedule it ahead of the specified start date. Most often, task start dates are linked to other tasks, meaning one task can start whenever the previous task finishes. Setting a task duration and linking tasks to each other based on the necessity of their completion versus specifying a definitive start date Let's Microsoft Project change the start and end times of tasks to reflect the scheduled reality of the workload. Also note that it is possible to schedule tasks to occur during non-working times as indicated by your scheduling calendar. This is useful if you need to create a task like wait for paint to dry when creating a remodeling project file. Although this is a critical task, it is also a passive task that requires no active work. In this case, you can enter the task as an elapsed duration task. An elapsed duration task is a task that occurs regardless of the working schedule. To enter an elapsed time duration for a task, enter an abbreviation of E before the time abbreviation letters for the task. For example, you could enter an elapsed task duration for the wait for paint to dry task by typing 2 E H into the duration field for that task. That sets two hours of elapsed time for the task that do not need to be performed during scheduled work hours. While most tasks are not elapsed time tasks, it is very useful to know how to set the duration of these types of tasks if needed. Also notice that if using the task information dialog box for task entry, you can check the estimated checkbox next to any task duration to explicitly define the duration as an estimate in the task list. While the durations of many tasks are often estimates, checking the estimated checkbox simply adds a question mark to the end of the duration time shown. This lets others know that the time shown is an estimate. You can also perform this same activity by simply typing the question mark character at the end of any duration entered into the duration column within the task list. These are just two different ways of doing the same thing. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.